Hi, my name is Justin Schaaf and I'm a software engineer with Patch My PC and former SCCM PFE at Microsoft. In this video, we're going to be covering how you can switch your SCCM environment from HTTP to require HTTPS to secure your client and server communications within your hierarchy. I'm pretty excited about this topic because I actually put a post up on Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit, and this was by far the most voted for topic for the next video. So we'll go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, what I've got is I'm logged into my domain controller and I don't have any certificate authority set up. I figured this would be a good place to start because many of you guys might not have that configured in your lab as well. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install a enterprise certificate authority on my domain controller. Now I do wanna note I am in no way a PKI expert and in fact, I know that this is not going to be best practice. Generally speaking, if you were in a production environment, you would issue a enterprise certificate authority, and then you would have subordinates under that on different servers. And the root level one would most likely go offline to prevent the key from being compromised. But since this is just a lab and I'm only using this certificate authority for SCCM, I'm okay with just having the one certificate authority and having that also issue my certificates. Uh, but I will link out to the PKI guides for the Microsoft Docs as well as some additional resources if you did wanna go into more details about how you could configure this in a more uh, best practice type uh, way. So on my domain controller, I'm gonna go ahead and choose to add a new role. I'll choose next on this page, next on the role next on the server, and I'm going to choose Active Directory Certificate Services. Uh, just the default options for the features, and then next. Next on the features, uh, default here, just next. For the role service, the only thing that I really need and that you would need for SCCM would just be the certificate authority. We wouldn't need any of the web service components of this to do this within a lab. So I'll choose next here and then install. Um, so this will take a minute or so. I'll go ahead and pause it and then we'll walk through the post installation task. All right, so that install is done. We could either click right here to configure it or we could go ahead and close and launch it from the wizard here to launch the post install task. All right, so on the credentials page, uh, we do need to have a enterprise administrator in order to install a new certificate authority within your domain. Uh, so just note that it's going to log in with the credentials that you're currently using. Uh, if you needed to, we could change that. In my case, I'm using my default administra uh, administrator. Uh, so that's going to have all the permissions that we need. For the role services, we want to configure the certificate authority. All right, so I'm gonna choose a enterprise CA. Um, so this is gonna be what we need to actually issue certificates. Um, but like I mentioned, if this was a production environment, you would most likely go with a standalone one for the top level and then take that offline. And then you could add subordinates under that. But for what we're doing in this lab, uh, we'll just go ahead and proceed with just the one. We want to have it as the root CA. So this is gonna be the top level. We're going to create a new private key. If we, uh, if you had an existing one, you could uh, go ahead and import that from the certificate. We're going to leave the default for the cryptography. Default for the CA name. If you wanted to change your root CA, what would show up in your certificates at the root level for your clients, uh, you could give that a common name if you wanted. Uh, default, I'm just going to change this to 10. Um, but like I said, obviously I'm not really too worried about best practices here um, just because this is a lab environment, but I will link out to those docs that will give you a better idea on some of the, the best configurations that you would want to do here. I'm going to leave the default for the database path and then choose configure. Looks like that is done. So if we go ahead and close this, looks like we're all set here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, open my certificate authority. Okay, so for SCCM, we're gonna create a few certificate templates 
that we're going to use for our IIS servers, for operating system deployment, and for our clients. Uh, before we go and create those, I do want to create a new security group within Active Directory. And we're going to call it SCCM IIS servers. And then we're going to go ahead and add our computer of any the computer account of any of your SCCM site systems that would be running IIS. So this would be things like distribution points, uh, management points, application catalog website point, software update point, any site system you would go ahead and put in this group. So for this lab, I'm just going to do it on my one server and I'm going to go ahead and reboot that SCCM server. If you don't reboot before you try to enroll a certificate after adding it to a security group, it won't take effect and you would get denied when you try to request it. So if we come back to our certificate authority, uh, what we're going to want to do is manage our certificate templates. So there's a couple of default ones that are going to go out. Um, but what we want to do is right click certificate templates and then choose manage. Uh, the first one that I'll create is my SCCM uh, IAS server. Uh, so we're going to duplicate the web server as a template. We do need to make sure that it's using Windows Server 2003 for the certificate authority. Under the general tab, I'm gonna go ahead and name this SCCM IAS cert. Okay. Under request handling, we wanna make sure the private key is not allowed to be exported. And under the subject name, we're gonna verify that supply in the request is selected so we can configure what type of DNS name we want here. Under security, we're going to add the SCCM IAS servers to be able to read and to enroll in this certificate. Optionally, if you want to take away the enroll permissions for some of the default accounts, this is mentioned in the SCCM docs, you could uh, remove that for like the domain admin and enterprise admins. In my case, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so I'll go ahead and choose OK. The next certificate that we need to create is for our distribution point. Now this one is a little misleading because it's not actually going to be used for the distribution point for the IAS part of it, but instead it's going to be imported into the distribution point site system in our console, but it's actually going to be used for the OSD. So for clients that aren't domain joined, uh, it would actually make use of this certificate that is on the distribution point to authenticate to any IAS system. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and make this a bit longer just because uh, I would have to renew this and re-import it uh, whenever that were to expire in my lab. Now, one thing that we do have to change in the request hand is we need to allow the private key to be exported. Uh, because what's going to happen here, we're going to request this certificate from our distribution point server, and then we're going to export it as a PFX file. And we need to include that private key because we're then going to import that cert into our console. And then our client's going to make use of that during imaging or if it was a workgroup client in order to authenticate back to our site. And it would need that private key. Um, so that looks good. Under the security tab, I'm going to go ahead and give the SCCM IIS servers uh, enroll permissions here, and then OK on that. Uh, actually, let me jump back into that. And just to be safe, I'm also going to remove, uh, it looks like the domain computers by default, they have enroll, but they, they don't have read. So they shouldn't be able to see this. But just to be safe, I'm going to go ahead and take domain computers out there. And now the next certificate we're actually going to create for our SCCM client. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make sure 2003 is also checked. Uh, and we're going to name this SCCM client certificate. I'm going to also set this to three years. And under the subject name, we can verify that build from Active Directory is selected. Request handling, we don't want to allow the private key. So that all looks good. And then under security, under domain computers, 
we're going to give them read and auto enroll permissions. I'm going to go ahead and apply that setting and then choose OK. That should be all that we need to do as far as our certificate templates go. Um, so now that we have those three created, we're going to go ahead and right click our certificate templates and then choose new certificate template to issue. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and select all three of those certificate templates we just created and choose OK. So at this point, they're all deployed and we should be ready on the client side to actually go ahead and request some of those uh, certificates. Now for the actual client certificate, we want to make sure that clients can auto enroll in that. So in order to do that, there's a group policy that we want to target them for. So I've got a couple of different SCCM sites configured within my lab. Uh, I only want to enable HTTPS on one of them. Uh, so what I've got here, if we come and look at my Active Directory computers, I've got a OU that contains my uh, site server and it contains one client that we're managing. Um, so in my case, I'm just going to enable auto enrollment for my computers within this specific OU. Uh, if you wanted all your computers to have the HTTPS enabled on the SCCM side, you would want to enable it at a top level that would affect all those computers. So under computer configuration policies, Windows settings, security settings, and then public key policies, there's going to be a setting called uh, Certificate Services Client Auto Enrollment. We want to make sure we set that to enabled and that we set it to renew expired and then update certificates that use templates and then go ahead and choose OK. And that should be pretty much everything on the certificate side of things. So if I come back to my SCCM site server, I'm going to go ahead and open a new uh, MMC console, and then we're going to add the certificate snap in. So we're going to go ahead and add the certificates. And we want to make sure that we add it for the computer account of this, this uh, computer. Okay. And then we'll choose OK. Now under the computer account under the personal store, we can see that we've already got a couple of certificates already issued here. So we have the SQL one and then the SCCM uh, signing certificate that would get created. Um, what I'll do here is let's see if we do a GP update forward slash force uh, we can see if we get that client certificate to auto enroll. Okay, so let's come back here, refresh. Uh, looks like that worked just fine. So we got that um, new policy and we can see that the certificate template that issued this client certificate was that one that we created for SCCM client cert. Uh, so it looks like auto enrollment is working. And we'll also verify that on our Windows client, our Windows 10 client that, we, that we're managing uh, when we jump over to that part. Um, so the next thing we want to do is request a new certificate. We're going to request it from Active Directory. And then we're going to request the distribution point cert and the IAS certificate. So these are showing up here because we targeted that group. Now for the IAS certificate, since we configured that setting that we need to supply the uh, additional uh, DNS names within the request, that's why we're getting notified that we need to configure this. So within the alternative name here, we wanna choose the DNS option. And this is where we're gonna add the DNS name for our, uh, for our site system that we're requesting this for. So I'm, I'm gonna add the host name and I'm also gonna add the fully qualified domain name here as well. Okay, that looks good, we'll add that. Now, if we were gonna use internet-based client management, this is where we could also add the public name, so something like ibcm.contoso.com. Uh, in this video, we won't be talking about that, uh, but this video is actually gonna cover probably about 80 to 90 percent of what we need in order to actually enable internet-based client management so we we might have a follow-up video on ibcm if it's something that i get feedback that would be useful 
And the only other thing I'm gonna do is give this a friendly name. So I'm gonna call it SCCM IIS Cert. So this is what will show up in IIS when we go to bind the certificate. And we'll choose OK and then enroll. So that looks good. Um, so we've got our IIS certificate and then we have our distribution point certificate. Now for the distribution point certificate, what we want to do is export that. Um, so remember I mentioned that we're actually going to export this and import it to our console so clients during imaging can have a client certificate they can use to authenticate. Uh, so for this option, we do need to export it with the private key. We'll choose the default uh, options here and then give it a password that we're gonna use when we import it back into our console. Okay. For now, I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. And then next and then finish. All right, so if we come into IIS, this is where we are now at a point where we can come and bind the certificates to our IIS websites. So if I come in here and look at my sites, I'm gonna have two different sites. I'm gonna have the default website. Uh, that's gonna be port 80 and 443. This is going to be where our management point, our distribution point are running, as well as the application catalog if you had that configured in your site. Uh, so what we're going to do, come into the HTTPS section of this, and we're going to go ahead and choose that IIS certificate. I'll go ahead and choose OK, and then close. So if we wanted to, we should be able to just kind of verify that's working. So if we go to HTTPS, SCCM3, looks like that is secure. And just to verify that we did the DNS name right in the request, would do contoso.local and verify that's also secure with no errors. Now, I also have my WSUS website running. Um, by default, in Server 2012 and above, WSUS will install on a separate website. So it's actually going to be using port 8530 uh, 8, uh, and 8531. Uh, so we're also going to want to make sure that we bind that certificate to that website as well and then close. Now, there's some additional configurations that we need to perform when we actually switch a WSUS to require SSL. I will link out to the following post. This is going to describe what I'm doing here. Um, but we have to make sure that we require SSL on a few of the IIS virtual directories for WSUS. Okay. So we're going to go to the API remoting 3.30 in SSL settings. We need to require SSL and verify the client certificates are set to ignore. We're going to do the same exact setting on the client web service and on the auth web service and on the sync web service and on the simple auth web service. Okay, now that that's done, we can actually go into a command prompt and we want to change WSUS to require HTTPS or SSL. Um, so to do that, we're gonna go into the install folder, which is going to be program files, update services, and then the tools folder. Within the tools folder, there's going to be a tool called WSUS util. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna run WSUS util configure SSL, and then you're going to enter the fully qualified domain, uh, the computer name for the server that we're running on to tell it what server to configure for uh, HTTPS. So we can see that that was successful, and we've now made it so that we only have port 8531 listening. Okay, so that should be most of the configurations that we would have to do on the back end. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is come back into my console. And we're going to switch our SCCM site over to HTTPS. Now there's a few different ways we can do this. 
if you had every site system that you want to use uh, HTTPS for, if you had all the certs configured, you can actually do this globally under the site properties and under client uh, communication. You could switch it to HTTPS only. Um, in my case, I'm just going to have it so it could use either or. And by default, we're going to uh, use PKI if we select this option here. Uh, so if a client had a certificate, it would prefer to talk to any of our site systems like our management points, distribution points, and software update points that are configured for HTTPS. If it had all the requirements on the client side, it would prefer to use that if there were both HTTP and HTTPS site systems in your environment. Uh, so yeah, we wanna make sure under the client computer uh, communication that we do check the box to use, client, uh, use PKI client certificate when available. In my case, I'm not gonna force everything to HTTPS. I'm gonna leave it under both modes and go ahead and apply that setting and choose okay. Now we're gonna come into our site systems and change the different roles that are going to require HTTPS. Um, so the first one we'll come into is our distribution point. And we'll tell our distribution point to switch over to HTTPS. Now we'll notice that the only setting that we have is intranet only clients. That's because we haven't configured a external uh, public DNS name. Uh, we'll cover that in an internet-based client management video uh, if that's something that you guys would like to see. Now for the uh, certificate, this is where we're going to import our distribution point certificate that's going to be used by clients during OSD and other operations if it was a workgroup client. So I'm going to go ahead and browse to that and enter in my password. It looks like that took successfully. Um, so we should be good for our distribution point. Now the next thing we'll go ahead and configure is our management point. Um, so we'll switch that over to HTTPS and we'll allow our intranet uh, only communications and then choose uh, OK. Now for the management point, it will actually need to reinstall it. Uh, so if we come into our logs and then site comp .log, this is the site component manager that would handle any installations of new uh, components within our site. We can see that it's actually now installing some of the management point components. Uh, it's going to reinstall that on our site. Okay, so I just let that sit a couple of uh, seconds, and it looks like we are now installing the management point. Um, so from site comp, if we close that log and jump over to our mpsetup.log, this is actually going to be the install file for the management point. Um, so what we can see here is when we're reinstalling the management point and we're having it so that it uses uh, SSL ports and it's setting that port to 443. Um, so we'll just wait a couple minutes while this completes and then we'll come back to the video. All right, so the MP setup just completed. Uh, we can see that it looked like it was successful. Um, so if we minimize this log file, uh, we should be able to check out the mpcontrol.log. So this is the log file that actually monitors whether the management point is online and whether we can, we can request and, and see that it's available. So it's basically querying IIS uh, to see if that's available. It looks like it hasn't quite kicked in yet. Um, so I'll pause it and we'll look at the, the check. Oh, looks like it actually just successfully checked it. Um, so we can see that it looks like the MP is online and we can check it. Now, just a bonus thing here. Let's see if I can show you uh, how we can manually check whether the management point is working in HTTPS mode. So it's a, it's a little bit more tricky, so I'll kind of show you what we can do to do this. Um, so what we're doing here is just a MP list. Um, so we're just pointing out to the management point uh, server, and then we're just appending the forward slash SMS underscore MP, forward slash dot SMS underscore AUT question MP list. Now in HTTP mode, this is actually pretty easy because we don't require a certificate on the management point side of things. 
Um, but since we switched to HTTPS, you can see that we're not allowing you to check it because it says we need a client cert. Um, so what we can actually do, just to show you if you did want to manually check this, it's been a little while, let me see if I can remember what we're doing here. Under content in IE, under certificates, what we should be able to do is import that distribution point certificate. So that's going to be our uh, client certificate that also has that private key. Um, so it's on my desktop. I'm going to just add the asterisks here so we can filter all files and then choose my certificate here. I'm going to enter in the password. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to allow that to be exported. So we're not going to allow the private key to be exported from Internet Explorer, um, but we will have the certificate that we should be able to use to check that. Um, so if we click on that, looks good. Now, if we refresh this, um, this might require IE to restart. Let's see if it will work after a restart. And there we go. Um, so we can see that we can actually request that on our client side uh, just by using the URL as long as we import that client cert into IE. Um, now that the check's done, I'll go ahead and just pull that certificate out and then choose OK. OK. Um, now, before we do our software update point, what I'm going to do on my client machine, just so we're not sitting here waiting around, we're going to do a GP update forward slash force. And let that go ahead and get that certificate. Um, so that looks good. Uh, so we'll go back into our um, system and go to our software update point. And what we're going to choose here is to require SSL communication. Um, so what that's going to do is make it so your software update point is only configuring clients to uh, scan against the SSL port. Uh, so that looks good. We'll do OK on that. And we're going to look at the WCM.log. So this is the component that configures our uh, WSUS server. So it kind of syncs our SCCM. Uh, software updates with the WSUS configuration. So we can see we just got a notification saying that um, we need to update it. So that's going to be where it's setting it to HTTPS only. Um, so we'll wait for that configuration to happen. Okay, so it looks like that configuration was successful. So we've now switched over our SCCM site to use SSL for software update point scanning. And I think that's all the site systems that I have within my environment that are going to be applicable for HTTPS. Um, now, if you had something like the application catalog web service point, uh, you would want to go in and configure that. Uh, we can see in my environment, it's very basic. I'm running all my site system roles on my primary site server. Um, but if you had remote management points and distribution points, you would have to go through the process to request the IIS certificate uh, on each of those distribution points and uh, configure that. Uh, one thing to note, if you do have remote distribution points, you can actually reuse that uh, client certificate that we would come in here with. Um, so that doesn't have to be server specific. Um, so we could actually just request that and reuse that if you wanted to. Uh, you would just have to make sure you go through the IIS certificate request and bind that certificate to IIS on any remote site systems that you would want to configure for HTTPS. So on the client side, let's just see what we have going on here. Um, let's just see if we've got our certificate yet. And do that computer account, local computer, and then under the personal store, um, it looks like we do in fact have it. Um, so we can see it got it from that certificate template for our SCCM client. Um, so what we can do is we can check in control panel under the config manager applet under system and security to see whether or not it's actually switched over yet. Um, so in our case, it looks like it is still self-signed. Um, so what we're going to do is go look at our client log files. And I'm going to look at my client ID manager startup. Um, so this is the log file that's going to show us uh, when we're registering with our site. 
Um, so now that the site requires HTTPS, we can see that it still currently looks like it's trying to use HTTP. Um, so if we look at CCM messaging on the client, this is going to be when we try to send requests to our management point. Uh, we can see that it looks like we're still trying to use HTTP. Um, so what I'm going to do is just try to request the machine policy update and see if uh, it gets any of those new site settings. Okay, so it looks like we haven't quite updated yet. Um, so if we go check out location services, that's where we check for our management points and things like that. Um, we can see that we have um, failed to contact the management point uh, three times. Uh, the threshold is five. Um, so it can take a little time before the client's actually going to kind of restart and look up to our um, information we're publishing to AD to see that the site has switched. Um, so just, I'm going to try to force this to be a little bit faster. Um, so restarting the service should basically have it reach out and do all these checks for us. Uh, just to speed that up so we don't have to wait for this client to uh, kind of restart. Usually it can take maybe 30 minutes or so before it hits that interval. Um, but here's what I wanted to show you in Client ID Manager Startup. Um, so what we can see now that the service is restarted, um, this would also happen uh, on the client itself after a few uh, few failed attempts. This would just happen itself. Um, so we can see that within Client ID Manager Startup, we can now see the PKI certificate is available. Um, so Client ID Manager Startup is the component on the client that handles the registration with the server. So anytime that we had a new certificate, um, we're going to we're going to attempt to re-register with the site. Now, the the ID of the system still going to st stay the same. Um, it's just going to do that registration uh, just to verify that it is, uh, in fact, working with the new certificate. Um, so we can see it's now registered. Um, so if I come back in here and reopen my control panel applet, because um, it doesn't open on the fly, it won't update that value. Uh, what we can see here is on the client, we are now using PKI. So that's using our uh, certificate that we issued through our uh, PKI server within AD. Um, so if we come back to our CCM messaging log, uh, this is gonna be where we're sending uh, IS requests to our management point. We can see that we're now uh, looking like it's all successful here. Um, so everything looks good. We're successfully sending messages. We've got our client switched over to HTTPS. Um, so at this point, we are uh, pretty much good to go. And I think that that's all I was planning to cover uh, within this video. Uh, but like I was mentioning, this could tie in very well to a future video on inter internet-based client management as well as the um, cloud management gateway within SCCM. Um, so that's all I have today. Uh, looks like everything is going well. We've got our client reporting back. Um, we can see that it just re-registered, but this will come back green. And then if we look here, uh, it should change to PKI for the uh, communication. So under the client certificate. Um, so you can just kind of verify that uh, your clients are switched over by adding that column here, and you can just verify that that all looks So that's all I have today. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment in the accompanying blog post and YouTube uh, comment section of this video.